Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. On July 19th, Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung visited the One Stop Support Center for Digital Sex Crime Victims to encourage its personnel while reviewing its operations and results. The first of its kind among Korean autonomies, this center opened in February to provide customized services including counseling, legal assistance and linkage with medical support. In addition, individual cases can be referred to Kyungi Province Special Judicial Police investigators who are stationed at the center. Kyungi Province has announced plans for the compulsory installation of environment monitoring systems at construction sites funded by the province so as to reduce noise and fine dust generated by such sites. Accordingly, the province will undertake 46 measures including the installation of 17 noise meters, 12 fine dust meters, 14 CCTV systems and 3 safety signs so as to intensify environmental control at 26 sites where applicable. The province also aims to improve public trust in the management of provincial construction sites through the installation of on-site information boards that list construction company names, work durations, pollution prevention facilities, and environmental control status. Kyungi Province recently opened its seventh mobile worker shelter. Launched in 2019, the Kyungi Mobile Worker Shelters provide mobile workers with customized resting opportunities so as to improve their working conditions and ensure their right to rest. The province also plans to provide diverse services including labor-related counseling and employment education at these shelters. In November, another shelter is slated to open in Pochon City as well as a variety of additional on-the-job resting facilities. In the recent Kyungi Youth Place Facility Contest held among the cities and counties of the province, four facilities in the cities of Suwon, Anyang, Gimpo and Gunpo were designated as exemplary places for youths by Kyungi Province. To assess the 13 facilities that applied for this designation, Kyungi Province and the Kyungi Welfare Foundation utilized an on-site evaluation team, surveys and a selection committee during a period that ran from April to early July. Each facility designated as an exemplary place for youths will receive 50 million Korean won for program operation and promotion costs, as well as support through active provincial promotion. Kyungi Province recently announced that, in cooperation with the Korea Forest Office, it will undertake measures to counter the explosive proliferation of stick insects that is occurring in areas of the Suri and Cheonggye Mountains. This announcement follows an injury report received from a hiker in the Cheonggye Mountain area on July 13th. Control measures will be chosen in consideration of environmental impact, insect life cycle, and the minimization of damage to hikers and will include traps such as sticky rolls as well as other methods. The online group sales promotion program for agricultural products, promoted via a crowdfunding format by the Kyungi Agri-Food Institute, has achieved successful results. According to the Institute, approximately 500 consumers purchased agricultural products during the 20-day promotion period that began on June 21st and ended on July 12th, with sales amounting to 16 million Korean won. This online group sales program was launched by the Institute via Naver's donation website Happy Bean to promote the marketing and sale of the province's exemplary agricultural products. Kyungi Province announced that it will start receiving applications for farmer basic income from six cities and counties beginning with Pochon City. Unlike the farm income support programs of other autonomous bodies, Kyungi's farmer basic income is paid to all farmers. The province expects that this will also help strengthen the rights of often neglected female farmers. A monthly farmer basic income payment of 50,000 Korean won will be made to anyone engaged in agricultural production. Payments will begin in October 
after the end of the application period in September. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.